I, I rushed and did my research and looked up the essay, the very famous essay, by Walter Benjamin, and I'm just going to read you one line quote which says everything. Even the most perfect reproduction of a work of art is lacking in one element, its presence in time and space, its unique existence at the place where it happens to be. In other words, an art of a piece of art is more than just the object. It's its history, it's what it absorbs to it. And Walter Benjamin calls it aura. Uh, copy doesn't have an aura about it. It doesn't have any ritual surrounding it in terms of, you know, it, it, perhaps it was in a church, well, uh, whatever. And it can only be a copy. It can't carry that je ne sais quoi that it, art has. It is only a copy, but it is a perfect copy, isn't it? Well, it's so. not. It's the best that science and digital reproduction can do. It's, it's not copied from the original, is it? It's no, copied no, from no, pictures it's, it's the it's original. from a photograph. I mean, digital technology is amazing now, and Factomati, who are the company who have made it, are doing the best they can do. But still, if the original appeared, which is not impossible because it's said to be in a barn somewhere in Sicily, having been gnawed by rats, they would like, we would all like to see how good the replica is against the original. The original would still be the original. But there is this issue that now digital reproduction is so good that Factomati claims that if they were allowed to do a re replica of the Elgin marbles, the experts wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Now that starts being quite problematic. I mean, this is an oil painting which, which clearly yeah. has one original object. But a lot of art, I mean, photography is one obvious example, another might be the several shots yes, that I understand have been put in from Alderheid uh, uh, for Damien Hurst. I mean, a lot of art can be reproduced. But photography, Absolutely, is can't it? photography is already different. I mean, you haven't got the relationship what of about the hand. Prince? Sorry? What about prints? Well, we still have, we have the thing with, with, with photography, that there's a difference between the original print and a modern print. So that in exhibitions, we did an exhibition of Hungarian photography, and people realised and were disappointed by the fact that we were using modern prints from negatives. So they're close to the original, but they're still at, you can call it a snobbery. I find it very interesting that people have noticed that in the Royal Collection, they often display now digital re reproductions of drawings. They don't want to display their Leonardo's because of the effect of light. And absolutely no, I mean, it's declared in very small print. And we've got used to some level of tolerance and acceptance of the quality of digital reproduction. So the lines are being blurred. But I mean, when you look at those drawings, for example, are they inferior to the originals? Well, I think it is problematic. We were on the island of Delos recently, and we looked at some sculptures, and we admired them and thought they were the originals. And then suddenly we realized that actually the originals were in the museum nearby on the island. And then immediately you think, oh, hang on a minute, maybe I shouldn't have admired them quite so much. We must go into the museum to look at the original. But I, I, it, it's a very tricky area, methodologically, I think. Because if you think it's the original, then your response and attitude to it is often the same as if it was the original. And in this case, Sue Hubbard, the original is missing, hasn't been seen since 1969, and this facsimile is going to go in its place yes, above I have the it, altar. That's absolutely fine, because we haven't got, we haven't got the actual painting. As uh, Charles said, it's maybe being gnawed by rats, who knows? But it isn't the same. The, the, it doesn't come with that patina of history. It doesn't come with the whole experience of the past. It doesn't. The, the, the interesting and tricky thing is that they can now reproduce patina because the quality yeah. of digital reproduction... I mean, Victorian reproductions reproduce the form, but they didn't really reproduce the surface. Yeah. Now the ability to reproduce everything yeah. is, is it, so it, precise. But I think also, there are two Mona Lisa's on there anyway. Well, <laughs> but it also is a question, a much more philosophical question, whether an artwork actually remembers something. So, you know, whether there is something intrinsic in the Caravaggio that remembers his touch. You haven't got, you haven't got that in, in, in the reproduction. So there is always going to be some sort of difference because it's been removed, divided off, cut off from the artist. Yeah, a lot of contemporary artists don't touch the art they produce. Well, so they, I know, yeah. I know ma ma many artists now, many academicians have huge numbers of people working for them. Anish Kapoor has 
36 yes. people in his studio, and he himself uses factor multi. A lot of people don't know that much of the work made by contemporary artists is actually made in Madrid by this company, Factor Marte, who are incredibly skilled, and they get digital instructions from the artist's studio. And then, for example, Grayson Perry, his tapestries, which were on display in the summer exhibition. So he'll draw them, then he'll send instructions. He won't down, say them. <laughs> down, down, no, 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 he certainly is. Down the line and to Madrid. And he draws them on iPads. And then, then Madrid, they adapt them into a form, and then they send them to Brussels, and a week later the tapestry comes. So it is, it's, it's a sophistication. Is this the end of art? Well, people are using... I think what it is is that contemporary artists use what's available to them. And now the quality of digital reproduction means they're using the best available. Thank you both very much.